Hey everybody, and welcome to the section Elasticsearch Basics and Tools. This section is all about digging in and finding out how Elasticsearch works before we really dive into the code. So there won't be any PHP in this section. It's going to be some information on how Elasticsearch works, some command line and some other Elasticsearch tools, really digging into querying and how Elasticsearch is working. First, we'll start off with some basic Elasticsearch concepts. We're going to talk about how Elasticsearch operates how some of the data is structured, and look at some simple Elasticsearch queries. Then we're going to move on to manipulating Elasticsearch via the command line, where we'll take a quick look and an introduction to the Elasticsearch REST API and using the command line to run some queries and commands against our Elasticsearch server. Next, we'll move on to intermediate Elasticsearch concepts, where we dig in even deeper in how Elasticsearch operates, how data is analyzed, and everything works in the back end. And finally, We'll do a quick introduction to the Elasticsearch Query DSL. We'll go over the different parts of the queries that we'll be sending, and we'll build some more advanced queries to run against our Elasticsearch server. So let's get started. Let's start with some basic Elasticsearch concepts. In this video, we're going to take a look at what Elasticsearch is and how it operates, how data is structured within Elasticsearch, and how items we save are stored within our Elasticsearch data structure. So let's get started. Let's start with a little bit of a background on Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is an open source, full text search engine library written in Java and based on Apache Lucene. Elasticsearch is a distributed, near real time, full text search engine. We say distributed because Elasticsearch scales horizontally very well. Elasticsearch cluster can contain many nodes and those nodes can be run on a varying number of servers. We'll say near real time, because when you index a document in Elasticsearch, it's not immediately searchable. There's a small delay. By default, shards are refreshed automatically every second, but this value is configurable. And don't worry, we'll get into what a document and indexing shards, clusters, and nodes, and everything else is as we move on. As well as a search engine, you can also just use Elasticsearch as a schemaless JSON data store. Uh, it's schemaless. When you index a document in Elasticsearch, you're not required to define a schema for it ahead of time. When you send a document, when you send the JSON, Elasticsearch will do its best to infer the different field types and will build a schema for you as you send it more and more documents. There are a number of advantages and disadvantages to using Elasticsearch. Some advantages are that it's cross-platform. Like I said earlier, it's written in Java, so you can run it on any machine where you can run Java. It's document-oriented. It stores and indexes entire documents as JSON. It's schemaless, like I just explained, and it's fast. Like we said earlier, it's Neo real-time. Some disadvantages of Elasticsearch. It's not a relational database. It's not necessarily a disadvantage, but if you try and shoehorn in the wrong kind of data with no joins, no relationships, foreign keys, transactions, and those kind of things, it's going to be a lot harder to use than your standard relational MySQL or other database. Elasticsearch security. By default, Elasticsearch will only listen on local host, but if you open it up to the outside world, it does not perform any authentication or authorization. The documents quote, leave that as an exercise for the developer. There is one thing that Elasticsearch has released called the XPack, which is a paid extension that they have that integrates a lot of features, security alerting, monitoring, reporting, that does add some authentication and authorization, but that's not available for free and it's not available by default. And tooling, Elasticsearch is fairly new compared to a lot of other databases like your MySQL. The first version of Elasticsearch was released in February of 2010. So a lot of things are being developed still, but there's not as robust of a tooling infrastructure as there might be for something like MySQL. We've already run one command against the Elasticsearch API. Most of everything that we do with Elasticsearch will be done against the JSON-based REST API. In the next section, we'll dig into using the command line and some other tools to run queries against this REST API. And like I promised earlier, there are a couple more terms that I'll go over to provide some background on what Elasticsearch is and how it works. 
clusters and nodes. A node in Elasticsearch is a single server that's part of a cluster. Nodes are identified by a unique node name. Prior to version 5.0 of Elasticsearch, the node name was a random Marvel character name. But now, after version 5.0, it's just a random UUID that's generated. Nodes join a cluster by name. If there are no other nodes on the network, when you bring up a new node, Elasticsearch will create a single node cluster. The default name for that is Elasticsearch. A cluster is a collection of one or more nodes that are identified by a unique name. The default name of a cluster in Elasticsearch is Elasticsearch. It's possible to have a cluster with just one node, as we said before. And you can expand and scale your Elasticsearch by adding more nodes to your cluster. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about how data is organized and stored in Elasticsearch. There are three concepts we're going to go over pretty quickly here. Those are index, type, and document. An index in Elasticsearch is a collection of documents with similar characteristics. A single cluster in Elasticsearch can have as many indexes as are required. Within each index, you can have a number of types. A type is a logical category or partition of the index. This allows you to store several types of data in the same index, the type being a collection of documents that have a set of common fields. Within Elasticsearch, fields need to be consistent across types within the same index. So if two types have the same field, say two types have a last name field, they must be strings in both types and the fields must have the same configuration. Europe can define a mapping for a type in Elasticsearch, but it's not required. By default, the mapping is inferred as you index documents within the type. Arrays and objects are supported for field types within Elasticsearch. There's no special array type. Any field can hold one value or multiple values of whatever field type it is configured as or it has been inferred as. A document in Elasticsearch is the basic unit of information that can be indexed. It's the base unit of storage. Documents in Elasticsearch are immutable. They're formatted as JSON. And when you index a document, it must be assigned to a type within an index. Like I said, documents in Elasticsearch are immutable. You can replace documents or you can make partial updates. When you make a partial update or replace a document, what happens is the document is retrieved, the changes are made, and the entire document is re-indexed. There's a special property of these documents, underscore version field on these documents, that tracks the version of the document within Elasticsearch. Whenever a change is made, the version is incremented. This version field is used to provide optimistic concurrency control. Elasticsearch uses this, so if you pull a document and go to re-index that document and the version field has been incremented, you'll know that a change has been made to that document and there's a conflict. This is in contrast to a relational database where the rows are locked, something called pessimistic concurrency control. So that was some basic information on Elasticsearch. That'll give us some background information, help us better understand everything that we do as we move forward, especially when we start programming in PHP and our Laravel application.